last week I, I went to the social worker and asked her if it would be possible for me to go down to Six Nations for a visit because the Primates Commission meets starting on Friday and Saturday I, and because they told me I could go home for you know a weekend or whatever and so she looked at me and she said well she says the team has been talking about discharging you so why don't we have a meeting and talk about that I said great so we had a meeting last Thursday and as part of the test the uh, physiotherapist came to my room and made me walk without my walker. And I did, you know, I, I can walk without it, but for safety reasons right now, I'm gonna use it because I don't wanna fall, it might set me back. So I passed the test and, uh, you know, I went into the meeting and they were all for it. They said, you're ready, you know, you've worked, you've done what you're supposed to do, so yes, we can, do, let's discharge you. And I said, next Thursday? And they said, yes. You can leave next Thursday. So it's really exciting. I mean, uh, the folks here have been great. I'm going to miss certain things about it, but I'm also ready to go home. So it's, you know, been quite a journey. <laughs> and it's still not over, not quite over. I, I know that, but, but this is a big step for me. You know, I still have some uh, medical things I have to check check into, uh, but I, they're not life-threatening. And with the medication I'm taking right now, uh, those other problems I had shouldn't reoccur. In terms of fluid retention, that was my big, big problem. Uh, that's what compromised my breathing. Um, so I'll have to keep on those diuretics until whenever, I don't know, I have to see what the doctors say. My bed, <laughs> my bed definitely. Uh, you know, these hospital beds are, are a bit uncomfortable. Um, and I, I remember when I was in the uh, hospital, they, they always had the bars up, so I couldn't get out. They thought I was going to try to escape. And actually, I probably was. Uh, but I didn't know I couldn't walk. You know, I thought I could. And they, they actually had me restrained, too, at one point, because they were just afraid I was going to try to get up. Um, but anyway, they're not comfortable. Um, it, but, you know, they serve their purpose. So I'm looking forward to, to my queen-size bed. And I think just being in my own space and, you know, being able to do what I want, what I need to do uh, when I want to do it, you know. Um, and, you know, family down there will be very supportive, I know. Well, still prayer, definitely. Um, that, you know, has been really powerful and, you know, has brought me to this place, I believe. And I know there's a lot of people praying, you know, with great sincerity and generosity and that, that needs to continue. Um, and all those people <laughs> who have been doing that, you know, I'm just so grateful to them for all the prayer and for all the love that they've shown me. Um, I'm still getting cards, you know, from folks who, who are telling me they're praying and, and lots of nice little gifts. Like I got this nice little amulet bag from a friend of mine in Arizona, you know, with a turtle, my clan, and an arrowhead. And just these little, you know, tokens of hope are, are really nice. Um, so those, those kinds of things really lift your spirit. And that's what's important here is, you know, spirit, is being able to lift my spirit. And hopefully, you know, by lifting my spirit, I'll be able to help lift other spirits as well. Uh, I was just on a conference call with our suicide prevention workers, and, and that's what it's all about. 
it's all about restoring the spirits of our young people and you know older people as well and so anything we can do to help that is what we need to do uh, not not easy in many of our communities because they have been so broken but possible and I think that's you know the message I want to get across is that anything is possible I mean if you know when you think about what I went through and where I was and 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 that I almost died and now I'm sitting here um, ready to go home um, it's possible and if it can be possible for me and then all of these other things can be possible for other folks too. And it's that, you know, my mom used to always say to us, never give up, never get up, give up, no matter, you know, what you're going through, no matter what happens, never give up. And so that's, that's what I'm taking away from all of this. And I think also um, a focus, because after my surgery, it was difficult for me to focus you know, on what people were saying, and I couldn't read uh, because I couldn't, I couldn't concentrate. I could not, I didn't have that kind of focus. Uh, but now the focus has come back, and, and I'm beginning to see clearly now uh, where we need to go in terms of Indigenous ministry. And I think uh, we're ready to really move and ready to really begin. Uh, helping our folks out there, you know, uh, lifting their spirits so that they can lift other spirits in their community. Oh, I think so. Um, people won't recognize it, but I'm, I'm much more vulnerable than I was before. And some people see it as being a nice characteristic, you know, uh, and in my, you know, upbringing, that wasn't what you were supposed to be. You were all supposed to be strong and tough um, and just do things on your own and not, not let other people help you. But I see now that uh, I need help and I'm, I'm not afraid to ask for it. So I think for me that's, that's a big change. Um, and I think too, I've I've become more, more introspective. I'm, I'm thinking a lot before I say something. I mean, sometimes I just shut off my mouth uh, without really thinking about what I was saying. But now, you know, I take time to think about um, what I want to say and how I should say it, instead of just, you know, speaking it and. Sometimes that can be hurtful. Um, and yeah, you know, people, people will say I'm a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but I, I like to think of that as a good force. And not so much, you know, sometimes when you say that you think, oh, ooh, scary, you know, <laughs> that, that woman is scary. Um, but I don't, I don't see myself that way anymore. Oh, in so many ways. I mean, I, I can't count them. Um, every day has been, there's been some kind of blessing uh, that has come upon me. Um, the other day, uh, just out of the clear blue, the Bishop Brown walked in. Uh, he's been in the Solomon Islands, but when I was in hospital, he was coming every other day or so to see me and pray with me and bring me communion. And just out of the blue, he showed up and uh, it was it was really good to see him and and to pray with him. Um, so yeah, there's all all kinds of blessings that are coming forth. Um, and you know, I hope I hope I've been giving some blessings to to folks here. I mean, there's so many people here who need help, and you know, and I'm always looking out for folks. Uh, uh, that may not be able to to do as much as I can do. Everyone, keep the faith, you know. How many times have we heard that? Keep the faith. <laughs> it's so important to uh, to what we do and to who we are as as people, you know, as as human beings. 
And, you know, when we, when we walk upon, you know, Mother Earth, and we're only here for a short time, and it's just, you know, a short journey. And during that journey, you know, we have to figure out what it is the Creator wants us to do and wants us to be. And unfortunately, there are people who never figure that out. Um, so I would just encourage folks to, to figure out what it is the Creator wants you to do and wants you to be and do it. Um, because we need it, you know. Our Mother Earth is hurting in so many ways, you know, by violence, by wars, by famine, by sickness. Um, all those things hurt. Not only our Mother Earth, but hurt people as well. And I think if we do what we're supposed to do, you know, we can just put an end to all of that. But, you know, and people will <laughs> may say I'm being idealistic and a dreamer, but there's nothing wrong with that. I can be a dreamer. And, I mean, where, where would the world be if we didn't have dreamers? You know? Don't know. Maybe back in the Stone Age or back in, you know, um, the medieval days. Who knows? So there's nothing wrong with being a dreamer.